There we go. OK, so here is just a few outcomes. Um, by the end of this lecture, you should be able to, to calculate the reactions at the supports. It's something which you already know how to do, but I just want to add a little bit more meat into it just to cement it in your head because it's very important. This is the first stage of designing um, a beam. And then draw, share, force diagram and bending moment diagrams. You already know it, but just like I said, I want us to cement it. And then identify from the diagram the maximum shear force and the maximum bending moment values. The reason this is um, needed is because you only design for your maximum bending moment and you also only design for your maximum uh, shear force. So you take the maximum values because those are the worst case um, scenarios. You take those worst case scenarios and you design for that. And you also I also teach you how to select a suitable beam from the design table. Now these are steel beams, okay? I'm talking about steel, particularly not concrete reinforced, but this is steel. And then to check for shear stress. Wow, what is shear stress? Well, we'll get to talk about it when we get to it, but um, don't worry about it. We'll get into it by the end of this lesson. You should be able to do all of this. Okay, what are beams? I'm not going to go through what beams are because we, we spoke about this in the past weeks. So really, uh, you can read it if you want. Just pause this video and read this if you want to cement it, what beams are. But I'm assuming you already know what a beam is by now. Okay, and the types of beams, I mean, we've gone over this through the weeks. Um, as you know, a cantilever is simply supported. We've been through all of this fixed ended. We've been through it. Even last week, we recapped on this. Okay, and then um, more types of beams, uh, types of loading on beams. You already know a point load. You already know, you know, you know, uniformly distributed load. This one. Um, the one you might not know is uniformly varying load. It's not very popular. Mm, I don't think you'll be designing for it in this course. Uh, maybe as you go higher, we will, but definitely not in N5. It's a bit too complicated for you, but um, remember we're taking things step by step. So it's just to introduce it to you that it exists. Actually, when it comes to the real world, it's not uniformly distributed. It's, it's more varying. As you can imagine in a building, um, you know, those different loads there. Concentrated moment, don't worry about it. You're not going to be designing for it. It's just to introduce it to you for now. Okay, the things that you'll be really designing for is point loads and uniformly distributed loads. Okay, or a mixture of the two. If we are really mean, if the examiner is really mean, then he can take out uniformly varying load, but don't hold your breath about it. It's just a little bit more information on shear force um, and bending moment diagrams. It's uh, just for you to, you know, get into it. Uh, you could have paused there and read if you wanted to, but um, you know, Let's do these examples over here. We'll, we'll start small. We'll start with this simple one. Last week, the load was um, the simple was in the middle, so it was easy to just calculate the reactions because you know you just half the 40, then it's 20, 20. But now, you know, as you can see, there's three meters this side and one meter on the other side. So how do we treat that? Well, we did it last week. I did a more complicated one, so this should be really, really easy for you. Remember how to solve reactions. You take a moment. So we take a moment uh, uh, about A, 
and then clockwise is positive. So remember, moment is force, which is 40 kilonewtons times distance. So times three, 40 times three for this moment here. And then for this one, VC moment, it's VC as the force times four. OK, so it looks like we took a moment about A right here. That's what it's saying there. And then um, anti-clockwise is positive, meaning when we go VC, it's going up. It's pushing this thing up. So and that's why it's VC times four. That's the distance. And the reason this one is minus 40 times three is because 40 kilonewtons is a force and it's pushing the beam down. OK, so by pushing it down, it will move in a clockwise direction. So clockwise is negative. So, you know, and we know moment by that is zero. So by A is zero. So we saw VC is 30 kilonewtons and VA is 10 kilonewtons. Could have done simple ratios if we could with maths, but this is the short way of calculating it. And then um, in terms of um, <clears throat> the shear force diagram, remember our VA is 10, our VC is 30. So VA starting at the position of A, we go up, okay, we go up uh, 10. Okay, maybe let me just uh, plug my, um, my utensils here that I'm going to need to demonstrate this to you because I need I need to write it down. OK, so we go up 10 right here. OK, and we're still at 10 here and then we go down 40. OK, so by the time we go 40, we go 10 and then the rest is 30 down. So we're 30 here. It's minus a 30. And then we are still at minus 30 here, and then we go up. <clears throat> Remember, VC is 30 kilonewtons, so by the time we get we're back to zero. Okay, remember, uh, we have to get back to the origin for these things to be in equilibrium. Okay, so when it comes to the bending moment diagram, we know bending moment at the reactions is always zero as well for a simply supported um, beam. So remember what I told you last week? I said you stand at a point, you're standing here. Remember, moment is force times uh, distance. So if we're looking at our left, the force is VA, which is 10. Um, which is calculated quickly. 10 times the distance is 3, so it's 30. So it means that here it's 30 kilonewtons meter as well. Okay, and then back to zero. That's it. Okay, let's move on. Um, that was a simply supported. Now this one is fixed. Okay, which means there is, whenever it's fixed, it means the reaction here is yes you have a reaction going up to you know counter react to this one but because it's fixed it also has a moment okay let's see how that looks like but uh just to recap one kilonewton in the middle it's a cantilever and then two kilonewtons there all right so we solve the reactions uh, um the reaction going up is three kilonewtons. So uh, how does this look like? Well, you could have started it here if you wanted to, but I would have started it here and go three kilonewtons up. OK, go three there and then I'm sustained, I'm sustained, I'm sustained. And then here I need to go one down. OK, so if I go one, remember I'm at three here. If I go one, um, one from three is two. So I'm at two there. And then from two, um, I'm sustained. 
still at two here and then I go down two back to the origin. You know, things must balance all the times so, to show that this is in equilibrium. So this red one is, is basically the same as this one. The only difference is that I started on the left, but with this one that they did here, they started on the right. They went down two, sustained. Okay, they went down two, sustained. Remember, it's still two there, and then going uh, going down one from two, we are at three, and then still at three, and then there's a three, we go up. Cool. Now remember, there's a moment here, so to calculate this big moment, uh, if it's fixed, remember moment is actually force, which is this one times, remember this thing is at a distance of 1.5, 1.5. So it's one times 1.5 plus two times uh, the two is a distance of three. Okay, from the fixed. Now I'm not sure what the answer is here. It's six here. Six um, plus 1.5, 7.5. Cool. So that means this distance here is 7.5 over there. Okay. And in the middle, if I'm standing there, I just have in the middle two times 1.5. I don't know what two times 1.5 is, but probably let's say three, maybe. Let's say three. Then it's going to be three there as well. So it's just a quick bend a moment. Um, that's how you do it. These are just examples of the scenarios which you already know. This one is joy shear force and bending moment diagram. This one is, um, as you can see, it has a UDL. And the UDL is uniformly distributed load. How can I tell it's a UDL? Because it's given in kilonewtons per meter. If it's in per meter, then it's a UDL. Because if, if it was a point load, then it would be just kilonewtons. Let's see how we treat this. You already know this, but anyway, let's go through it. You need to solve your reactions first. So you take a moment. Okay. Um, moment at A is equals to zero. We know that. So we want the moment. We want. Um, we are looking for V. B. So what we do then, even though they converted this, okay, let's first of all, let's start this. Anticlockwise is positive, it's a positive moment. So first it's, it's VB times the distance of five. Cool. Now the uniformly distributed load is pushing it down, right? So what we know is that the force is in kilonewtons per meter. But if we convert the, the UDL, the UDL is always acting. Uh, if you to convert the, con, um, the UDL to a point load, it's always acting in the middle of the UDL. And that's why then we say uh, for the force, it is um, 10 times how many meters? It's 10 times 5 meters. That's why we have the 50 over there. And then that 50 is acting in the middle of the UDL. It's heaviest in the middle. Concentrated load. It's concentrated at the middle. And the middle distance is 2.5. And that's how we get VB then. It's 25. And then we can do the sum of forces. Well, if it's 50 here, then you can just, because it's exactly in the middle. Even if you do ratios, each of them will take 25. So coming to the shear force diagram, we go 25 up. And then remember, a UDL is not sustained straight like a point load. It's, it, it, it slopes gently. It slopes accordingly. So it slopes until it gets to the 
25 here. Okay, because remember the UDL is 50 uh, in total. So if you had gone 25 and it was a point load, it would go 25 down and 25 further, which makes it 50. So this is a negative 25 down here. And then VB is 25 going up. So that's why 25 going up brings you back to the origin. Now, when it comes to the bending moment diagram, um, remember you're standing at one point, okay? And then um, you calculating. So what you do, how you calculate this one, there is a formula. If it's simply supported, you just use this formula, or you can also solve it from first principles. Remember you're standing here. So you will go VA, which is 25, times, remember you're standing in the middle, uh, times force times distance, the distance of 2.5, um, plus the UDL is, uh, first of all, it's converted to a force, so it's going to be 10, and it's traveling a distance of 2.5, okay? And what's, um, half of 2.5, um, 1.25, I don't know. So to be safe, let me just say 2.5 divided by two. Okay, if you put this in a calculator, surely it's gonna give you the same answer as that, 31.25. Okay, so remember this is just the force component and then this is the distance component, even though this has a distance as well, but it's just to convert it to a point load. All right. OK, let's move on then. Now, here is a more um, realistic uh, design. The diagram below shows a steel beam supported on two reactions, nine meters apart, then extends a further S uh, meters maybe they meant five, I don't know, I think five, to form a balcony. The steel beam will be required to carry the three point loads and two uh, uniformly distributed loads. Let's look at this. So what we have here is three point loads. There they are, one, two, three. Okay, okay, the cantilever part is there. That's the two meters. Uh, that's uh, uniformly distributed nine kilonewtons per meter and then the rest is seven kilonewtons per meter with point loads on top of it wow wonderful select an i section parallel flange steel beam to ensure the building is safe so we will be designing with an i section in mind okay so the load diagram okay is that the shear force diagram two millimeters is to one kilo. These are just scales, the bending moment diagram. These are just scales that you can uh, um, you use when you are drawing this thing. The permissible bending uh, stress grade, 43 mild steel is 160. Remember, this is the permissible bending stress. Okay, the maximum shear stress must not exceed 100 MPA megapascals. All right, there we go. Okay, this two information, we will need it when, particularly when we are, you know, uh, checking and designing as well for the actual I-beams. All right, let's move on. Um, where are we? There we go. So first question says, calculate the value of the reactions. Cool. Determine the values of the shear force at um, offer the shear forces at each intersection. Draw shear force diagram, setting all values. So they want a shear force diagram for point two, for point three. They probably want a bending moment diagram. There we go. And then the actual design then calculates the maximum section modulus for the loaded beam. They want to know which 
section exactly are we going to put in there to you know handle the the loads to handle the maximum abandoned moment maximum shear force and then select a suitable um i section so uh, uh 4.4 will help us to then select that actual beam okay loaded from the boe 8, uh, 8 over 2 steel tables. I have that. You should have it. You should be given as well in the exam. Um, but you can, um, I think you can bring it in, in, um, in your exam. Calculate the maximum shear stress in a chosen steel beam, which should not exceed 100 um, uh, megapascals. All right, so... Um, Let's get down to it then. Here we go. So we, we start with the reactions. We take a moment by A and then uh, adding everything moment by A, for example, we'll do all of that, add all the loads accordingly, and then uh, finally solve it. Uh, so that reaction is 106, it's important have it in mind uh what do we have there i don't need to go back all right so it's 106 okay that's a rr which is here so we have 106 kilonewtons there and then the r and we have 70 kilonewtons those are the reactions okay and we solve them just like we've been solving the rest Okay, let's just go through this on your own if you have time. All right, and then over here, what we have here then, uh, it's just um, now it's 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 drawing the shear force diagram. For example, we go seventy up right over there. We're going seventy right over there. And then, because it's a UDL, excuse me, because it's a UDL, it's lands over there for that position, and then we go uh, further down and down and down and then down, 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 up, up, down until we reach zero at the end. So it is from here then that we get our maximum uh, shear force, but. Like, for example, I can see there is no other number. The maximum one is 70.94. The rest are smaller than 70. Okay, as you can see, at each point, 63, 49, uh, 50, 60, 46. So the maximum one is 70. Okay, let's move on. Uh, bending moment diagram, we do the very same calculations, force times diagram, force times distance. Uh, you know, we will calculate the bending moment diagrams right over here. So it is going to move from zero. Uh, it reaches a point. 67, because I think that's the one. Yep, 67. From 67, it goes higher to C. By the time it's at C, it's now at 185.76, which is this one. And then at D, which is there, these are the critical points. Um, these are curving, okay? It's, it's at 37, and then so forth and so on it goes. Okay, but the maximum one, as we can see, is probably this 185. Okay, so that's the maximum bending moment in this question. All right, so now they say 4.4. Uh, Remember 4.4, it wanted this sectional steel modulus, and uh, this is the formula for it. Okay, this is the formula for it. It's maximum bending moment divided by stress, allowable stress. 
the maximum pending moment, remember we just picked it, it's this 185. This times um, 10 to the power 6 is just to convert it from kilonewtons meter to uh, newtons uh, millimeter. All right, and then this 60 we're given in the question, the allowable, allowable stress. And so we solve it, it's that amount. Okay, so we just write it in a scientific notation in a power of 10 is to uh, minus six meters cubed. The reason we do it this way um, is because that table that we're going to need uh, to read off the, the actual uh, steel is going to be in this uh, SI unit. So it's very important. Okay, so now that we have a uh, sectional modulus, we should go to the table. Let's go to the table. There it is. There it is. So let's go back just to get the number we're looking for. The number we're looking for, since um, it's 1161, one, we're looking for a number that's going to be higher than this because the number that's going to be higher than this sectional modulus is going to be the one that can sustain this weight. OK, so remember, we're looking for ZE, the sectional modulus. So when we come here, we're going to first look for ZE. ZE is right over there. See that? So these are the values for ZE. And remember, we're looking for the value that's going to be uh, more than 1161. OK. 1161. One. So we're looking for something more than that. That has a ZE more than that. And you remember it's 10 to the power minus 6 meters cubed. That's why we converted it to that. Now let's look. There we go. We have 1060. Zero, zero. It's a little bit lower than that. So that's on the border. We don't want that section. Let's take one that's actually a little bit higher, and it's this one right over there. See that number? It's 1189. And so that section is actually a 406 by 178 by 67.2. That is why then um, when we came here, it's it's not four six sorry it was four five. That's why we picked this answer then four or five uh, by one seventy eight by sixty seven point two, and its sectional modulus is that one one eight nine, which is higher than the one one six nine. So it's a suitable uh, section. That's how you choose a beam. Okay. Okay. So. The next question was just to check uh, for shear stress. To check shear stress, you take the maximum shear force and you divide it by the area of the web of the section that we chose. A web, like I showed here, a web really is just um, this part of the I beam. Remember, it's an I beam shaped like a I. So this part is the web right cool and then uh, these things are called phalanges flanges or phalange it's up to you but what we are interested here is the area of the web okay so the maximum shear force remember it was 70.95 and then uh, this times 10 to the power 3 is just to convert it from kilonewtons to uh, Newtons. And then um, let's go back to that graph to look for the section for the web. So first of all, they tell us that the web H is that is, is the total distance there. So we go to the H, we see it's 409.4. 4. 
And then we need the thickness. The thickness is that one there, it's T1. So we also go to a value of T1, which is this one's here, and we can see that it is 8.8 .8 over there. So we should say 409.4 times 808, which is exactly what we did over there. Okay, it's D times T. Well, it's not D, it should be uh, H. Okay, it's H. Distance, but it's H. All right. So, uh, well, distance and H is the same things. Just in the table, it gives it as H, but in the formula, it gives it as, as D. Okay. So, we put those together, we get 19.69 megapascals, which is less than the 100 which was, um, you know, given in the question, which was permissible. OK, so that's it. That's how you do that, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you design for a steel beam. You need the maximum shear force because we used it to check if the section we chose is good enough. And then we need the maximum bending moment because we used it to actually design for um, you know, the actual beam, the steel beam. Uh, as you can see, and then that. Now, this is the method that we are teaching you in M5. There are other methods, but this is the one that you have to know because as you can see, there are many things you could have used uh, from this table. There's an I over there, okay? And then you just choose based on, you know, just like we did here with the ZE. But I don't want to confuse you too much with so much information. I'm just going to give you this one which you need for this course. Just remember, maximum bending moment, we use it to design for the actual steel. And then the maximum shear force. Uh, we use it to check if the steel is good enough. If the steel well, is not good enough, then we would go back and change it until both the maximum shear force and the maximum um, the maximum bending moment are allowed for. Okay, cool. Now I know that um, you might have uh, a lot of questions um, concerning this.